What's up everybody, this is Dal Stone here. And today in this video, I'm gonna be covering a topic. Thanks to Jason Becker on Twitter. Thank you so much for suggesting this topic to me. Uh, I'm gonna be covering uh, the, the, the asset pipeline, the uh, creation of an asset, the pipeline and the workflow from beginning to end. So now first, I just wanna make sure that I say something right out the, right out of the gate here. And, and that's, everyone has a different pipeline. Every studio has a different pipeline. Some people might have similar pipelines. Some people might have the exact same, right? But the most important thing is that there's not just there's not one way to go and do things, okay? Um, but I just want to show you kind of a basic um, workflow and my specific workflow. This isn't workflow that we do at my studio or anything like that. Again, this is me just representing myself and. Any opinion on my videos is is my opinion. Okay, so so let's get started. So again, this is gonna be a quick overview. So I'm gonna create a cube. Okay, I'm not gonna do anything too fancy. We're gonna call this um, low cube or something or cube underscore low. Okay, so let's say pretend this is a car or something. Uh, I don't know, um, but let's say I I have I I put my low poly chair or whatever it is that you're modeling. I finished modeling it, right? So I'm gonna go and I'm going to export this out. I'm going to put everything on my desktop. Obviously don't do that. Okay. Um, should be putting this stuff in like a folder, a project folder and stuff like that. Um, but for me right now, actually, you know what? Let's, let's, let's go and do that. Let's not show you guys bad habits here. So let's go to Dropbox. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go a uh, new folder. I'm going to say uh, cube. Okay. Cube zero one. Okay, and then we're gonna go here. We're gonna say meshes. And then again, I think I covered this already where I create a bunch of different folders and stuff. So I'm gonna go meshes, cube low. I'm gonna export it out as FPX. Um, I'm gonna save this scene. Oh, sorry. Save scene. We're gonna go to scene here. So we're gonna go cube. <clears throat> I'm also using Maya LT. Um, so if you're in an indie studio, you might be using this. If you're in a bigger studio, you'll probably be using the regular. Maya, and some of you might be using Moto, 3D Studio Max, Blender, whatever. Okay, so I'm gonna kill the history here. I've exported it out, perfect. Now it's time for me to go sculpt it in ZBrush. So this is ZBrush. So I'm gonna go to Z plug, um, the Z plugin. I'm gonna go to FBX Exporter Importer. I'm gonna import. These are all my options, by the way. Uh, again, you can pause the video if uh, your options look a little bit different. Cube, go to meshes, go to low. So I import this cube in here okay so now there it is there's the cube I like using uh, white the matte cap white there we go so there we go so now you have your cube right I'll turn perspective on for now just so that things look a little bit nicer cool so now you have this in here um, and we want to start adding some subdivisions we're going to subdivide oh. So first off, maybe what we'll do is we'll go, <clears throat> we'll do some things to it, okay? So I'm gonna go to the Z modeler. I'm going, actually, never mind. I'm just gonna go, and I'm gonna crease everything. So I'm gonna go crease, I'm gonna crease all. Okay, and then I'm gonna go subdivide, subdivide. So now we've got a bunch of polys. Let's say we're up to 300,000. And let's say we're gonna just do a simple kind of sculpting on this thing, so trim dynamic. Sorry. Okay, go like this. Let's go to a new document. Say three hundred thousand trim dynamic. And let's say we start to you know, sculpt it a bit. And again, I'm doing this really, really quickly. So we're gonna sculpt it, sculpt it, sculpt it, sculpt it, add some cool things to it. Right, I'm just going, I'm just trim dynamic in the edges to kind of give it that stylized kind of look. Break up the edges and stuff like that. Again, it doesn't have to look perfect. This is just for example. 
I was thinking about this video and I was like, man, this is not, not going to be like a, you can't just, you know, bang this out. Like this is going to be tough to bang out. And out of all the suggestions so far on Twitter, this is definitely the one that is going to be the most time consuming. Cool. So we do something like that. And then let's say we um, do a standard brush. Hold on. Why is this doing this? Okay, B, S, T, there we go. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to put an alpha on here just to kind of change things up. Um, we're gonna use the drag. So we're essentially warping this quite a bit, right? Like this is not the same shape as we had before, okay? Uh, and then we're going to like intensity or something, bump this up a little bit more, right? Now the shape is definitely different and I'll tell you why that's important in a sec here. So you can do something like that. So this is our high poly, right? High poly. Do, 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 do. I don't know. Let's just add like a little circle or something in here. Let's maybe bring this up a little more. Cool. So now we have this going on. Awesome. Let's say we this is what we're happy with. We're happy with the high poly of this. Right. So now we're going to export this out. Now, first off, we need to make sure we rename this. So I'm going to rename this to high. And this, we're going to export out <coughs> cube high. Cool. So it's going to export out. Give it some time. Subtool exported. Perfect. Okay, so we'll minimize that. So we're gonna bring it back into Maya and, and we're gonna do something called retopologizing. And essentially what we're doing is we're trying, cause you're, cause you're gonna notice that this shape is quite different now. And if you wanna get, like for this, this might be okay, to be honest with you, right? The, the bake, the high poly to low poly bake might actually work out here, but just for the purpose of Workflow and typical workflows. I'm gonna actually retopologize this. So, so let's hear. So let's see. So what we can do is so we're gonna make this live, and then I'm going to add in a few, a few of these here. What's going on here? Edges. Um, let's see here. Polygon tool. <clears throat> Let me add in a few more of these. All right. So what's happening is now my model, because I made it live, it's trying to build the shape as best as it can um, surrounding it. So let's see here. So let me just quickly move this out so that's there. So yeah, so I definitely need some more retopology over here, I think. I'm just going to go with this. Give it some more topology. So that's So my point, so the whole point of this is trying to cover as much of the shape as best as you can. So I'm going to try and cover this so that it actually takes the bake of the high poly. All right, so this is retopologizing. Obviously, like there's tons of videos out there on retopologizing. I'm just doing this really quickly here. There, let's say that they were happy with, oh, see, that's the high poly. You don't want to select that. That's going to freeze a bunch, bunch of things. So I'm going to try and make this shape a little bit nicer here. Go 
cool, cool, cool. So then once you have that, what you want to do is you want to let me just select all these vertices. I'm just going to move these vertices out just a little bit to kind of give us a better sh overall shape. So it takes the bake a lot better. <clears throat> so, so now we're going to UV this. Okay, so this is very important. You have to UV this for um, for these purposes. I'm just going to do an automatic UV just to make it nice and quick. What's really important about the UVing here is you want to make sure that nothing is overlapping. Um, especially if you're doing bakes, like a high to low poly bake. So let's say this is good. Let's say that this is approved. Now, uh, one thing that you're that this is this is a really important step that a lot of people tend to forget. So this is our new low poly, right? I'm gonna do this. What you want to do is you want to make sure that all of your border edges. So hold on, let me try, try and show this. All your border edges here need to be hardened, okay? Or else your bakes always end up looking weird or there's seams and weird lines and stuff everywhere so I have a I actually have a script which I didn't put here hold on here I have it on my notes it's a script that will select all your script my, uh, um, was it border edges hold on UV border edges where's that script here we go so I have a script here. Oh. I have a script. I'm just going to clear all this. Script here. Select that. Select the script. I'm just going to drag it onto my my shelf so that I have it saved. And I'm just going to call this um, UV border edges. And then I'm just going to press that button, and it should now soften and harden edges based on a um, based off of the border edges okay so now all of these should all be hardened cool now now that everything's done I've UV the low pol the re apologized low poly I'm gonna export it back out and we're gonna call this um, you can call this low again I guess uh, that does kind of lose your work though so we might say Sure. Let's just call it low. Typically, do I normally typically call it low? Yeah, yeah. So, so we call it low. Replace it, and then we bring it into Painter. All right. So in Painter, I always use uh, PBR Metal Rough, uh, and then I'm gonna go to the Mesh. Let's go to Cube. We're gonna go to Scene. Oh, Mesh. Go to Low Poly. We're gonna go. Let's say twenty. Let's go ten twenty four just for speed and, and time saving. So here's our mesh, right? Here's our mesh. Here's our UVs on this side. Um, we're going to do some baking. Texture set settings. So let's go and do some baking. So let's bake some our meshes. And right for now, for this purpose, I'm only. I'm not. I don't need an ID mask. But typically, you'd want pretty much everything here. Um, but for again time savings we're going to just only bake out the normal map here we want to use the high poly so we're going to go high poly here um, we won't worry about the cage and stuff like that I'm not going to go crazy with this um, with these settings and then that should be good so we're just going to do a quick normal map bake and there we go so now we have this bake of a high poly and low poly again it's not perfect right it's not perfect but we have all of our kind of the details that we've had I mean obviously I would have to work on the shape a little bit more to get a nicer shape of everything but let's say this is good okay so now we have our high poly and our low poly great everything looks fine um, and then you start to to texture this right so let's say we um, so, so yeah, so 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 you, so you started to texture this. Everything looks good. Got your normal maps in there. Finish up your textures. So let's export this out. Just gonna go to meshes cube. 
we're gonna go to uh, substance I'm just gonna export out here sweet so again most importantly it's the normal map for this tutorial video it's the normal map that matters the most obviously all of this matters when you're um, making your your colors uh, your height and your roughness and your metallic right height maybe not definitely these four though you'll probably need for sure so yeah so now let's say we're, we're good to go we're gonna go into marmoset tool bag so marmoset tool bag we're gonna throw in the mesh cubes are one we're gonna go to our low poly there's a low poly right um, again I'm not gonna go through how to light and stuff like that this is just a workflow video we'll go to the fong here we're gonna load in your textures so for me I typically just drag and drop my textures into here there you go and I believe I have to flip the Y yep so I flip the Y and there it is I'm gonna brighten up this lighting so that you can see this a little bit better um, let's see brightness there we go yeah so there we go and then now we have it in Marmoset you start playing around with your lights adding lights doing all this lighting stuff make sure all your textures are in here and then you make some renders by just capturing an image oh sorry image and open so that way you can see the image and here you have it okay. and there you go all right so hopefully that video helps everyone out that's a quick overview from, from low poly to high poly sculpt retopologizing uving texturing and rendering thank you so much